Helen Beatrix Potter was born in London in 1886. Her parents were rich, respectable and very dull. Like most children from a wealthy family, Beatrix and her younger brother Bertram hardly ever saw their parents. They had a nanny to look after them and Nurse Mackenzie firmly taught them that children should be seen and not heard. From a very early age, Beatrix loved sketching and painting and when she visited her grandparents in their spacious country home or went on their long family holidays in Scotland and the Lake District, she discovered a great and lifelong passion for wildlife and nature. Together with Bertram, she spent hours away from the grown-ups painting flowers and animals, like the rabbits which the children tamed themselves. Years later, Beatrix said, I do not remember a time when I did not try to invent pictures and make for myself a fairyland. Once they found an abandoned printing press which they repaired and fueled using their own homemade ink. It was a messy and risky operation and like all their most interesting games and experiments it had to be carried out in secret because they knew their parents wouldn't approve. Life was often dull but at least they had each other. Then Bertram was sent away to school, leaving Beatrix at home where she was lonely because her parents, fearful of germs and bad influences, didn't allow her to make friends with other children. As she grew up, to ease her loneliness, Beatrix surrounded herself with pets, which she had to smuggle into her room. Among them was a frog called Punch, a quantity of mice, two lizards called Toby and Judy, a hedgehog called Tiggy, and several rabbits. Beatrix also started writing a diary or journal in which she put all her secret thoughts and ideas. She invented a special code so that only she could read it, and the code was so good it wasn't until many years after her death that someone cracked it, allowing us a glimpse into her private world. Beatrix was very clever, but in those days, women were given very few chances to achieve their ambitions. Although her sketches and paintings were good, no one seriously believed it was anything more than a hobby. She felt differently. I must draw. However poor the result, I will do something sooner or later. Then, one Christmas, Beatrix's uncle had a very good idea. He suggested that Beatrix should try to sell some of her work. So Beatrix used her favourite rabbit, Benjamin Bouncer, as a model and came up with a Christmas card design which she sold for £6. A lot of money back then. Beatrix rewarded Benjamin with an early Christmas present, a cup full of hemp seeds, and wrote in her journal... I retired to bed and afterwards had an impression that Bunny came to my bedside in a white cotton cap and tickled me with his whiskers. Beatrix had tasted her first success. Now she was keen to achieve more. It was her good friend Annie Carter who had been one of Beatrix's governesses who came up with the answer. I've got a wonderful story to tell you today, OK? Now, my dear. Beatrix often visited Annie's young family. The children loved these visits because she told such wonderful stories, usually about the adventures of the pet mice and rabbits she brought with her. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr McGregor's garden and squeezed underneath the gate. First, When she was unable to visit, she sent beautifully illustrated letters instead. And it was one of these letters which Beatrix decided to turn into her first story book. My dear Noel, I don't know what to write to you, so I shall tell you a story about four little rabbits whose names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail and Peter. She called this first book The Tale of Peter Rabbit. Amazingly, at first, no one wanted to publish it. They were put off by Beatrix's determination that the book should be small enough for children to hold easily. So, eventually, Beatrix decided to publish Peter Rabbit herself and she used all her precious savings to pay for it. 
All 250 copies sold like hotcakes, and soon a company called Frederick Warren offered to professionally print the bunny book, as they called it, this time in full colour. Within weeks, all 8,000 copies had sold out too, and the book's enormous success meant that suddenly, and quite unexpectedly, the shy and lonely Beatrix Potter was in great demand. She had plenty of ideas for more stories, all of them based on her detailed observation of the animals, people and places around her. For instance, she explained... Hunker Munker in The Tale of Two Bad Mice was caught in a mousetrap two years ago and is now so tame she will sit on my finger. The popularity of her little books meant Beatrix quickly became a rich woman and she used this wealth to buy thousands of acres of land in the Lake District countryside she loved so much. She appointed a local lawyer called William Healis to organise everything and, with his help, Beatrix became an expert in the traditional ways of the local farmers. It wasn't long before they fell in love and decided to marry. So Beatrix Potter, the famous author, became Mrs William Healis and she threw herself into running her farms. She found she had less and less time or interest in writing her stories, living quietly in the Lake District until her death in 1943. Beatrix left all her land to the National Trust so that it could remain unspoilt and be enjoyed by everyone. Today, there's a huge Beatrix Potter industry. Beatrix wouldn't have been at all surprised. Years ahead of her time, she had come up with the idea for a Peter Rabbit doll, the first of literally thousands of toys and gifts to be based on her books. And here in the Lake District, you can find the world of Beatrix Potter, where you can wander through some of your favourite scenes from the 23 books. Thanks to Beatrix's generosity, the National Trust have been able to preserve much of the Lake District as she knew it. She'd certainly feel at home in the village of Hawkshead today. Inside William Healis's office, in the heart of the village, there's a special gallery full of reminders of her life and work. Beatrix's original paintings are very delicate. They have to be kept out of the light so that they won't be damaged, but I've been given special permission to take a closer look at one of them. This is Peter Rabbit himself from the tale of Benjamin Bunny. It's amazing to think that this was the actual picture that Beatrix painted all those years ago. Because of her great talent for painting and storytelling, Beatrix Potter gave us two wonderful and lasting gifts, her enchanting stories and some of the most beautiful countryside in Britain.